Hello and welcome to tonight's LOL Sports Roundup. We're going to cover the games from this past weekend. Yes, I was out of town if you didn't notice. So we're going to go over the LCK, LEC, and LCS here. Predictions, I am 269 and 131. Went 3 and 3. Um, you know, I, I had predicted in the dark about this and this. And went 1 and 1 in the dark. So, um... I'm going to go over this, uh, try and remember what I can, because I did watch all these games, t you know, this evening. Um, LCK, KT, T1. I thought KT would win this one. Uh, they did not. T1 win 3-2. Gumiushi, 22-11, 36% of damage, and the win was MVP. Zeus, 15-10-27. Aiming, 29-7 and 17-33% of damage in the loss. I did hesitate to make Guma MVP. I did keep tabs on the Discord when I was out of town. Um, and the discord was heavily in favor of Guma being MVP and I thought you know after the first couple games I didn't really agree. I thought Zeus was very good for them on the Aatrox He was absolutely on another level and they were dominating KT in the first couple games But KT would respond and it had a lot to do with aiming. I thought that aiming You know he not only did he solo kill Guma I think at one point but then he almost did it again um, and, and really crushed Guma uh, to be quite honest with you um, and then in game five, it was just the Guma Caria show. But I will say this game five was close. It was back and forth, and Guma had to save the day. Clear waves, make something happen in terms of just stopping KT by himself. Um, if I recall, they were trying to push down mid lane, and he made a stand, and that stand made a difference. Um, I think it was 2v1, and that's after he already had had three kills around the Drake to, I mean, even give them a chance in that team fight. So in game five, I thought he was the difference maker um, in the end. But throughout the entire series, I could argue Zeus was just as good. I think Owner and Cuz both left a lot to be desired. Both inted their absolute faces off when it came to smites. Owner did have a key smite in game five. Um, but, I mean, outside of that, he had thrown quite a few opportunities. And I'm not going to give him... Uh, credit for one and ignore all the other problems he had. I thought Baker looked good. Um, you know, I thought that he in BDD, I thought Baker did better, uh, to be honest with you. Um, thought he was the better of the two. Keen one, didn't show up, in my opinion. Um, not nearly as much as Zeus. Keen playing Rise top in this one, which is a classic for him. But otherwise, I really was not um, all that intrigued by what he did. And actually pretty disappointed because this is the angle for Keen to have any chance internationally, I think, is with this team. His first good look in a long time. And um, this performance was lackluster. Now, they played earlier today Gen G and T1 and Gen G sweeped them 3-0. Uh, Pays 34-3-16, 30% of damage. Peanut 5-4-45 was my MVP. Faker 7-12-10, 30% of damage in the loss. In my opinion, and I'm not carrying water for T1, I think T1 focused on this. This secured you to go to Worlds. They got blown out by Gen.G. I don't think they prepared for Gen.G at all. Does that mean that I believe Gen.G are not better than T1? No, I think Gen.G are better than T1, but we did see just a week ago that T1 are much more competitive than a 3-0 loss to, to Gen.G. Um, so... Why is Peanut MVP when pays his 34 kills? I thought Peanut was a difference maker. Uh, went top lane to get Doran ahead in both games one and game two, and then Pays just kind of cleaned up in the mid to late game. And good for him. He racked up a bunch of kills, had really nice stats, but I thought Doran was disgusting in top lane into Zeus, and it was because of Peanut giving him a lot of attention. I thought Chovy outpaced Faker in this one, getting around the rift. And that was a big deal. Chovy playing, I think, Talia, Azir, and Kaysante. Game two is a question mark. Um, maybe it wasn't as here, but the game one and three were accurate in terms of picks. Wide looks there, right? You have a, a facilitator mid in game one, a melee mid in game three, and definitely not either or in game two, right? So that's three different looks out of Gen G. Pays being consistent in all three. Peanut looking good. Doran looking good. And even Delight looked really good on the Blitzcrank when he played that. His hooks were, were very good. Um... T1 just really looked like crap, and I think it was because they focused on this one. All the emotional bank accounts out in that, they're going to Worlds. They can take a step back now. They don't care. Two seed, one seed, does it really matter? Not really. Um, and now they can go and, uh, you know, go to this event. So what? All it does is say, oh, you might end up in the same group as JDG. 
okay. Or, sorry, actually, it's not even that, that setup anymore. It's round robin. I don't even know if it really matters which seed they were when it came to first or second seed because I imagine both are locked in to, um, you know, the second round. So, I mean, was there a difference? Maybe not. Um, just, you know, the, the bragging rights. Gen G now have won three straight LCK championships. Um, and Peanut has won six. I believe that's more than any other jungler. Peanut, obviously, one of the best, if not the best, LCK jungler of all time um, in that conversation along with, you know, score in, in Canyon. Um, and Canyon has more years to go, right? He, I think he's like three or four years younger than Peanut, so I'm sure he'll pass him eventually. You know, Peanut had some down years too, right? LGD Peanut, don't forget about that. Um, LEC uh, got these 2-0. So Mad Lions 3-0. Um, I mean, Mad Lions 3-0 XL, they crushed him um, in, in this, in the 3-0. But in game... Hold your horses. So Karzy, 19-5, 14-39% of damage was MVP. Chasey, 7-5-21. Abadage, 6-5, 14-33% of damage in the loss. Excel were ahead in this series. In multiple games and through. Game 2 being the biggest one. Karzy coming back on the Sivir. Bringing them back pretty much 1v9 was MVP because of that. I thought Game 1, Hilly was very good on the rel. Set them up into a good place in bot lane, and bot lane were able to carry after that. But then game two, I thought it was the Karzy show. Game three, Excel get out to another lead. Oduwamne looking good in top lane, but they could not get it done. Niski doing some nice things, Alyoya doing some work, and then Karzy also on the virus being efficient, and they end up finding a way to win. Um, and, I mean, it's a 3-0, but it's a close 3-0. Honestly, Excel uh, could have won this series. Um, it just... When push came to shove, they just couldn't team fight. Patrick couldn't get it done. Abadage, I mean, I mean, dealt some good amount of damage. Didn't die much, but he couldn't keep up, you know. And, uh, I mean, it is what it is. Odo looking good at times, but then not able to carry the water and, and, and get the team over the hump. Elioya into Peach. I thought Elioya did better. Peach even got Lee Sin and, and didn't really, um, you know, clean up house. Now, this is the... I believe this makes Mad Lions maybe the second seed or something in her going into to Worlds. I don't know um, what how that all works. Um, but if so, that really makes um, LEC fans happy because if they're the fourth seed, they're losing to Golden Guardians. Um, BDS G2. G2 win 3-1. Um, Hansama 28-31, of damage. Broken Blade 14-4-29 was MVP. Nuke 24-12-10, 31% of damage in the loss. BDS need to take that away from this. This is a big deal. I am I am more than impressed by Nuke's performance in this very important best five. Um, they lost, but I thought he was excellent. I thought Adam, when he got an opportunity, looked good. But Broken Blade on the Clyde in Games 1 and Game 3 was the difference maker. I thought he was excellent on the Clyde and got them their wins. Caps on the Nico was very good in Game 3 as well. And then in Game 4, it was an absolute clusterfuck back and forth where it became extremely messy. And G2 find a way to win. A lot to do with Yike um, on the Trundle. Uh, however, I thought Broken Blade was really a menace. Uh, Han Sama gets a nice KDA. Dealt a lot of damage, but I just didn't feel like he was the one that was getting the team ahead in the first place. I thought it was Yike. It was it was Broken Blade, and I thought it was Nico. Um, and it's similar to how I kind of viewed this situation with Gen G. Uh, when you have a really good team, uh, players will end up with really good KDAs, may deal a lot of damage, but the gold differential was already really in place, and the game became pretty lopsided. You know, 75 win rate likelihood and things like that. And, you know, it's not a surprise when they win. Uh, BDS wins a game because G2 decided to draft Evelyn. That was kind of weird. Um, haven't seen much Evelyn this year. Uh, but G2 glorified scrimming it essentially with the Clyde and the Evelyn. Um, one could even argue it's a must win, so maybe they aren't glorified scrimming. And they're just showing we still can do this, by the way. Uh, if you recall, we played Clyde a couple months ago, and, and we looked really good on it for like a week or two and then just stopped playing it. Well, just so you know, that's still there. And the thing is, that's what makes G2 competitive against these sort of teams. And possibly competitive against the LPL. Is that they can say, hey, we're going to play this. You haven't played against this. That gives us our chance. Um, because when you play meta against 
players with better hands, you're just going to lose. You need to play off meta. You need to play chaotic. You need to play unpredictable. I always say it. That's how G2 plays. That's why G2 has a chance internationally. No other team really offers that variability. LCS. So I lost both of these because I didn't think NRG would get this done. CLG wins, essentially. So NRG, 3-2 win against TL. Contracts was my MVP. Game 5, he was excellent on the poppy. FBI, 22-12, 34, 30% of damage. Ignar, 3-7, 54. So Botlin went 25, 19, and 88. Eon, 16, 13, 25, 28% of damage in the loss. Summit looked good. I thought APA at times was okay, but other times left a ton to be desired. Pioshek, excellent on the Lee Sin. There were a couple uh, moments where TL looked like they were in the driver's seat, but through. Um, they, win a, they win a couple games, but I think one of their losses, where they should have won, they hard through, I think, game four. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate for them, you know, with all those great players on their team, that they, uh, you know, they, they don't win. They don't go to the, the finals. And they're going to Worlds, though, and with that roster, they're definitely more than competitive enough. But, um, you know, not great. Not great. Um, so, NRG, huh? Wow. Wow. So, um, I don't know how to talk about NRG when we got both of these at the same time. Um, they found a way to beat TL. It was hard for them at times, but they found a way. I thought Dokla... In the summit, like I said, I thought summit got the better of him. Contracts was MVP because in game five, he was really, really good. Um, there were there moments in the series on the poppy, especially where he looked very bad. Yes, I think he had a seven death poppy game before he pulled it out in game five. Uh, Palafox in, in APA. Palafox, I thought, got the better of him. Palafox looked excellent both games, to be frank. And bot lane, FBI, Ignar looked more than solid enough. Core JJ inting his face off. Eon getting some kills. But at the same time, not able to match FBI. And frankly, FBI I don't think is over the top great. So not matching him is unfortunate because I would probably prefer Yeon Core JJ over FBI Ignar. But the fact of the matter is, the energy bot lane was better. Speaking of the energy bot lane, they then play Cloud9 today and win. Uh, so, um... NRG went 3-1. Contracts was MVP again. FBI 26-6-22. 36% of damage. Ignar 4-7-49. So the bot lane went 30, 13, and 71. So 30, 55, 55, 55, 32, and 159 this weekend for the bot lane. Uh, Berserker 13, 10, 11. 29% of damage in the loss. This is when I say double Elam without reset is a sham. This is a sham. This is this is abhorrent. This is unacceptable. So Cloud9 beats NRG last week. NRG beats Cloud9 this week. NRG is MVP. MC, sorry, NRG wins um, the, the region. They get the first seed. And Cloud9 don't get an opportunity to lose. Despite sweeping NRG and NRG losing a game to Cloud9. Now here comes a, oh yeah, well... They got to watch them play. How can they plan to do a reset? This no, They can. They surely can. Or they can figure out a... a, a uh, we No one likes single Elam, but I'm going to tell you, this is why I will take single Elam over double Elam without reset every day. I do not think it is right to allow everybody but the winner bracket winner to lose. That is not right. All teams should be treated equally. All teams should have an equal opportunity to lose if that's the way you want to play it. Now, the whole, oh, you get to scout. I guarantee you every team would prefer an opportunity to lose than to scout a series the day before. And, you know, people say, well, then they should have just won. Well, then in single Elam, they should have just won. Where, like, I'm sorry. I mean, it's great for NRG, but I think this is, this is, why I don't like double Elim without reset. There should be an opportunity to play again. NRG wins. They win. That's fair and square. Right now it's one to one out of two in my opinion. If not, it is four to three C9 in a best of seven. That's the way it actually turned out. Um, when, you, when you look at the games and you look at the results. Um, if you treat everybody equally. 
But, you know, a lot of people are going to, you know, in the comments and things and, and throughout going to say, oh, well, Cloud9 should have won this if they wanted to win this or that. It's like, okay, well, NRG should have won last week. NRG doesn't deserve an opportunity to continue if they lost. Because Cloud9 doesn't deserve an opportunity to continue if they lose. Um, I just, I don't like it. I think it is terrible. Now, in terms of showing up, Cloud9 didn't. Fudge looked like crap. Dokla, I mean, didn't dominate him, but I thought Contracts got into Fudge's, Fudge's, uh, got into the top lane and made something happen and put Dokla in good spots. Um, there were moments where Palafox absolutely crushed it. I thought Palafox looked better in this series than that one, but like I said, I thought it looked good in both. Eminez looked bad. Blabber needed to do more. Berserker tried to 1v9 this series, couldn't get it done. Um, NRG win. NRG win, and you know, I'm, I'm so shocked by it that it's really hard to say much. I mean, I said a lot about how I feel about the whole situation, but I'm happy for NRG. I'm happy for the players. Those players have, have struggled on CLG for a while, Those that top side of the rift, right? Uh, FBI Ignar, I mean, cast-offs. 100 Thieves said we would rather have an old man. Uh, hell, Ignar was without a job not too long ago. And, um, you know, they're going to Worlds. They're the first seed for the LCS. I mean, I think an 06 angle is definitely possible. Um, but, I mean, give them credit. They're there, right? And in the end, being there is better than not being there. So, that's it for the roundup. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. Hope to see you again tomorrow.